Oh. oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Hang on. This again. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm, uh, <laughs> had a little internet connectivity issue, but we're good now. Um, <clears throat> it's Tuesday morning. And I don't have my comments on just yet, so give me a sec to get organized. I just woke up. So you get to see me do my morning routine. Huh. So, I'll do that. All right. I gotta get you all on here too. And I was, uh, I was thinking that maybe I wouldn't do a live today because it's Tuesday and a lot of people would be working. But here we are, doing a live. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm just getting organized. I just woke up you guys, those of you that are just tuning in. And uh, we're doing this this morning. <clears throat> Let's go. Here we go. And I'm in Victoria. I'm sitting in uh, my friend's place. He's over there working on his sprinter. Yeah. Morning. Morning. <clears throat> and we're, uh, I'm doing the electrical on his van today. Or at least getting started on it. Um, so, let me just try and get the comments going here. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I can see you guys. <laughs> there we go. Now I can see you guys. <laughs> there we go. Now I can see you guys. <laughs> okay, I'll turn the volume Now I can see you guys. There we go. That's better. <laughs> it's always a little bit of a thing to set this thing up. Ah, oh, hey guys. Um. Yeah, and outdoors. A video of me saying bye to my daughter hit home with me. Felt the emotion and completely relate. Yeah, that was a big that was a big moment. Huge moment. And I'm still feeling that for sure. Um, I know a lot of other people can relate to that sort of thing. Just, you know, being separated and disconnected from their kids like that. Um you know, we still made a choice at the end of the day to do that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, but it's still, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of sadness in that too. Anyway, um, you guys are kind of getting the story as it's wrapping together and stuff like that. But, uh, um, Ken Luke, you coming back up, up the island this trip? Um, Ken, I am kind of planning to go back up. So I'm in Victoria right now and I've got, um, this, the sprinter job that I'm here working on this morning and I can start taking off my, you guys like looking at these things, my window coverings. Um, and, um, I'll be heading back up there in a probably, uh, after this sprinter job's done. I'm going to be going back up a little ways, probably just up to Campbell River. So I've got another electrical job up there actually to do. And it's going to be on a uh, off-grid shack on a lake that's on an island. And apparently there's fish in the lake. Um, it's uh, fed by salt water a little bit, so it'll be pretty interesting to see if there's even salmon in that lake. But for sure there's probably trout in there. Um, so that trip there is going to be pretty fun. I'm just gonna take down my privacy curtain here too, so you can see that. It's my morning routine, you guys. And there's Nick, he's out there. Working, working away. He's prepping for this um, sprinter van electrical that I'm gonna get involved in. And a bit chilly. Oh, there goes my morning toot. Uh, so let's see what else here is 
Endless Skyway Adventures. How's the smoke in my area? Um, it's actually really good. There's 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 no smoke here. There's one little forest fire that's um, just um, we'll call it kind of northwest of Ladysmith. It's uh, it's under control right now. That one was about 37 hectares, I believe. Um, so not a very big fire, but still, there's you know quite a few people that were concerned about it. I think you could see it from Oyster Bay or something like that. But Vancouver Island's in good shape so far. It's super dry out here, mind you. It'd be really easy for things to light up and get going. So it's, uh, you know, gotta be really careful. Grab my hat. Ooh. And it's chilly. It's really chilly this way. Uh, so right now it's about 9.5. That's the outdoor temperature right now. 9.5 degrees Celsius. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to drill through the outside of your van. <laughs> um, use a little piece of rubber tubing on your drill bit. That'll make it work as a drill stop. <laughs> so Nick's uh, prepping his van a little bit this morning so that I can get in there and start hooking up his electrical for him. Um, Phil, thanks for the super chat, man. Hey, Joseph, we've enjoyed watching the amazing cabinet work you've done on the van. Real craftsmanship. Much love from the UK. Um, Phil and M. Thanks, Phil and M. Um, really appreciate that. I'm glad you guys are getting something out of those build videos. I've actually got um, a handful more to do and because uh, there was a bit of a gap there. I just I skipped over a bunch of stuff because of where I was at and what I was doing and what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I'll probably go back and sort of insert those videos from time to time, but I'm, for the most part, I'm really interested in keeping you guys going real time most of the time. Although, about that, uh, the videos right now are me up island, um, and I, you know, to be honest, they're kind of a, a few weeks old, which is a long time, and, and there's not a lot of content between when I was up there and here, so I've kind of. Uh, um, the way the way that's working is probably a handful of videos, but I haven't been filming a lot this week and uh, I'm just catching up and I'm trying to sort this whole thing out and I'm not going to get into my process with it But I'm just trying to find my groove with uh, with the YouTube and the channel and everything else like that My brain's going and I'm thinking I'll probably do some live or some videos of me out in the wild sharing all that stuff and then I'll probably do a video that's going to be one or two that's going to be more about the van and gear and just stuff that i do and some of the processes involved in how i go about stuff um because i want to add more value to the channel i want you guys to get more out of the channel than just seeing me out there having a good time and that's kind of the way it's been lately and uh i mean granted i've been i've gone through quite a bit and uh it's been nice to go out there and have a good time so um, but back in Victoria, here I am, I'm busy working away, trying to catch up on stuff. Um, so I'm getting a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to try to answer things uh, quickly. I've got, uh, what is my work and background? That's from Duke and the locksmith. Um, I got a video on that, Duke. If, if you go back, there's one saying, uh, I see you or something like that. It's one of my early videos and I talk about all that stuff. Um, yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. And Dr. Phelps, hope people are paying you for all the stuff you do. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of working there. So this is my friend Nick. He's a, he's a hunting friend of mine, so I'm doing the work for him. He's giving me a little bit of money to cover my expenses and stuff like that. That's what we agreed on. And um, in a way, like, I... Uh, I, there's there's a couple other trades that are involved so it's gonna be um, it's gonna be okay that way um, and I'm just talking about this electrical van guys that I'm doing so those of you just tuning in I'm sitting in Nick's backyard and uh, his sprinter van is right there and uh, I'll be doing the uh, the electrical install in that which would be pretty interesting he brought me a coffee, so I'm all set. And Kim, thank you for that super chat. 50 bucks. Woohoo! 
Kim, Kim, Kim sent me a gift card for Tim Hortons, uh, I think it was a month ago or so. I just finished using up that Kim gift card. And uh, thank you so much, Kim. It's been really great to have that. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, as soon as I did that, I was scratching my nose and I realized that's what some of the, uh, you know, that's like the inside thing. It's like, I just, you know, I got, I got a little line or something over here, but we're not gonna talk about any of that stuff on this channel. And I'm not into any of that, so we're good there. Um, I don't even like the smell of a pot. Um, anyway, let's see. Julian, why do you shy away when people inquire about doing sewing for other people? If I had a commercial sewing machine, I would take advantage of my skills uh, to make dollars for sewing for others. Julie, okay, good question. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because it takes a lot of my time to make something for somebody else. I used to make clothing for others uh, when I was making clothing for me, and it just wasn't worth it. Like I would, you know, to make to make it valuable, I'd be like, I'd sell you these pair of jeans that I'll make for you, like cut some pair of jeans and some intricacies and stuff. I'd be like, it'd be a thousand dollars, and they're like, no, and I'm like right and like I don't want to spend a week of my time making these jeans for you so that's part of the reason and I maybe could refine that process and be faster about it but I'm not a professional by any means with the seamstress and, and knowing the ins and outs of pattern drafting and all that stuff that goes along with with that so um, you know it, it really came down to like what's my time worth and what do I want to make for that so that I don't get uh, you know, upset with myself that I took on a job that I don't want to do. Um, and it, they, they were really artistic. I could show you guys some of the sewing work that I've done and then you can get a feel for some of the intricacies and stuff behind the sewing projects that I've done in the past. And I've hung on to some of my old clothes that used to fit me. They don't fit me anymore. I was a really small guy when I made that stuff. Um, so I gotta like redo my patterns and stuff. But anyway, I can show you that stuff later. I don't have any of it with me now, but uh, at some point I'll do a little video and I'll talk about my sewing background and stuff. So hopefully that help, sort of answers your question, Julie. Um, Paul Buzzware and Joseph, sorry I'm at work. I just wanted to know how much I appreciate you, Emmy and Chrome for your advice and videos. I'm currently working on a 1994 Ford E350 club, club wagon. Uh, Paul, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are at work right now and you probably can't tune into this. Tuesday morning, it's kind of, I expected that and uh, I'm sorry to drop a live stream on a day like today. I'm a little bit behind on my edits, so and I'm trying to be about giving you guys three videos a week on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday morning. And uh, yesterday, I just got carried away with other stuff and to get around to it. Um... I'm part way through an edit, but I'll have to work on it some more. Um, yeah, really great to see you guys this morning, and good morning. <laughs> good morning to all of you. I know some of you are, are working, and so that's great. I mean, you know, it's great that you're out there doing some kind of service for, for the rest of us and keeping everybody, keeping the world going around. So I appreciate that. Um... Um, we are getting a little bit of lag here, I think. You guys get the audio okay? Is it, is it good that way? Hmm. Hopefully you can all hear me good. I should check in on that from time to time. Um, your mojo, are you growing that cookie duster? <laughs> Sometimes I think about that, man. I, I think about cooking that, or growing that mustache back sometimes maybe i might do that for uh no november because we celebrate uh mustaches for november kind of like a men's health thing i might uh grow my beard out a little bit and then just shave it off so i don't have to you know go through the whole stubble right here but we'll see i'll do it for a little bit um let's see uh catch up on a couple of these things here <laughs> yeah it's this is fun the island's been a lot of fun man a lot of fun um okay uh, <laughs> uh 
Um, <laughs> I'm out of work, but my phone is hidden. <laughs> That's so great. And I missed somebody's super chat here. I'm trying to get to it. There, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Todd, thank you so much, man. I found you. I uh, appreciate that, buddy. Uh, you're helping put gas in the tank, man. That's really great. Um, have you thought about doing some technicals with the electric and band? Question mark. Um, that's from Gold Base. I'm not sure what you really mean by that question, uh, Gold Base. Maybe you can just kind of elaborate on that. I'll take a guess, and maybe you're talking about me talking about the electrical systems in a van in a little bit more detail. I think what I could do, and that's my intention with this Sprinter van, is to do that with this one and share a bit more of the technical stuff behind it. So hopefully that might answer your questions. Um, I'm just going to close my door because he's uh, filing away at something. He's installing this cabinet in there so that I can get in there and start doing electrical. Nick was, um, I was supposed to get going on this like on Thursday, but he was um, in Ontario and he had flight problems and and so we're doing this now. Um, Jasmine Santos watching from the Philippines. Jasmine, sweet. I, it's cool. I actually realized I got quite an audience over there in the Philippines. And um, I know my dad spent quite a bit of time living over there and his wife's from there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see you guys tuning in too. Um, all right, let's go down here. You guys have questions, you let me know, because it's kind of a Q&A, so I'm um, hoping I can answer some stuff and that sort of thing. Um, Bernadine Breske, sewing is time consuming, so I understand the reasoning. You bet sewing is time consuming. I have, like, such a respect for, uh, especially because men don't really spend a lot of time sewing. You don't see a lot of male seamstresses out there, so... Um, but I have a lot of respect for um, the females that I've met that know how to sew really well. It's an art form. It's like uh, it's like learning a trade, like carpentry or finishing carpentry. It's about just as complex and technical, and it's kind of cast aside as this sort of like, you know, um, base of work that doesn't deserve any sort of extra income or or something like that. It's really too bad because sewing is um, super technical and um, people deserve to make more money doing how cheap our clothing is. It's ridiculous how cheap our clothing is. Um, no, I'm not sure really. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I just finished building out this one and, and in a way I just kind of want to take a break from that whole thing. And it really comes down to circumstances and what happens here in the universe of life and that kind of thing, too. I could stay in this one for a few years. You never know. I could keep doing little upgrades and stuff to this one, making it a little bit better for me. Because um, I know I'm kind of shoving it in the backcountry, which is not what it's designed for. But for sure, something that's got a little bit more road clearance and maybe 4x4 four four would be a lot better. But uh, I'm working within my means right now. And that's that's great. <laughs> Um, let's go. <laughs> oh, you guys, it's good to see you all this morning. Jeffy Bear's in here too, eh? Okay, hey Jeffy, glad you're here, man. Um, miss your brother. I was chatting with uh, Emmy yesterday on the phone and we we're talking about you and how you might be coming here, and I was, I was chatting with just about everybody on the phone yesterday, except for Chrome. Um, Carol Stockman, what foraging book do you like? Beginner here. Um, I'll, I'll probably do a video on this, Carol, because uh, I realize there's a lot of questions about it, but just, um, you know, uh, I don't know, actually. I'll... Uh, it's been a while, so I don't really look at foraging books so much anymore. Like, I can just go and look at a plant and be like, I know what it is. Um, there's a lot of plants out there that I don't know anymore, but um, uh, there's a couple. There was, like, Pacific Northwest 
edible plant guide or something like that was one of them. Um, I remember the title of that one. It wasn't especially a good book, but it was it was pretty good. Um, and that that whole line does like one on fungus as well. So there's there's a couple like that. Um, I can't remember the names, but there's some better ones, and I'll, I'll try to address that in a video and do a dedicated video on this sort of thing. And that's part of the new vision here with with sharing and adding more value to the channel. So I'm gonna try and do like a intro to foraging video and talk about that stuff in more detail. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, Kathy Klein, if you could buy Chrome's ambulance, would you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, it's a pretty cool little rig for sure. Um, it's a huge project. It, it would be very equivalent to this van. If I took it on, I'd probably take a year to build that thing out. Um, and I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It would have to be a pretty, it's a great, don't get me wrong, that thing's wicked, but it's, uh, it's like a, it's taking on like a big project and it's not what I was really envisioning for myself, but I could live out of that thing for sure. Um, uh, Tam, Nick, can I have your email? Um, my email is in the description of every one of my videos. It's info at sharingthewild.ca. So if there's something important you want to reach out to me for, you can send me an email there. Um, I do get quite a bit, so I'm not swift about getting back to all those things um and but yeah that's the way you can get re reach me there okay big irish are there any things you would built put into the van that i would do differently now after living in the van for a while there there is so well is there there, there, there kind of is I mean, so this front cabinet that I built up here in the front, I'll just show it to you. This one here, which is which is awesome. It's been great so far. Um, when I was building this out, I was considering that I could I could put another fridge in this area, um, like a freezer, and run it as a freezer. So then I'd have one as a fridge, which would be down here where this one is, and that one as a freezer. Now, it was going to cost me a lot of extra time to revisit this whole thing and, and, and fit it all in there. And then I was thinking about my water storage and I was like, I really need this just for water. But then I thought, well, I could have put my water down here instead. And I could have put a much bigger fridge freezer combo up in this area. Um, when I started building this van, that was not in my thought process because at that time I was really using that passenger seat. So, you know, the just deleting that passenger seat came later and going and redoing all that work so that I could achieve that was just I just don't want to do it so anyway I'm happy with the way it is it's really great so <clears throat> um let's see so that's what I would do differently um let's go when you win the lottery, you'd buy buy a Winnebago Revel. I don't know what that is. I imagine if I won the lottery, and I, I rarely, rarely buy a lottery ticket. Um, so my chances are ex like zero, just about. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, if you know something like that, I'd probably buy a Sprinter and build that out, and I'd still kind of live a somewhat modest lifestyle. I'd try and share that wealth in in a, in a way that. It'd help a lot of other people out too and um spread it out you guys are kind of getting getting me and my sharing i really like sharing oh chrome's in here <laughs> it's my ambo mine 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 <laughs> yeah, that's funny bro yeah i know you love that thing that thing's pretty rad i was at john's place maybe a week ago hanging out with him and louise and we were looking at it it was pretty cool um yeah, it's a cool little Lambo. So, welcome, buddy. Glad you made it. Um, I'm just chilling in my... Um, and, and there's still people cycling in here. So, again, you guys. You see this house behind me? It belongs to a friend of mine. His name is Nick. And I'm here to do his sprinter van. I slept in his backyard last night. And I'm just, I just woke up. 
he made me a coffee and he brought me a coffee. Isn't that great? Um, so <clears throat> let's go for a little walk and check out the Sprinter. And while I'm doing that, I won't be into the comments as much, but I can come back to it. Mm. There he is. All right. He just installed some riv nuts so that that cabinet is gonna get locked into the walls there. Perfect. So that's where all the batteries are going on the middle shelf. And then the top shelf is getting the inverter and all those bits and pieces. That's his other cabinet. He's very excited because it's a uh, it's a pretty cool rig to be building up. He's got a water tank here. So we've got three batteries. There's one more coming. And then that's his freezer, which is this pretty tall looking 12 volt freezer, which can be operated as a fridge too. And then I've got uh, electrical stuff. There's his inverter. He's got a 2000 watt. He's actually got a 5000 watt inverter there. And we are gonna try to put one of these things in his van. My fingers are crossed that that's going to work with the charging system in the Sprinter, but I've uh, got to read into it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it's fun. Nick is a friend of mine that we've gone on a few hunting trips together in the past. And um, I think it was last year we were hunting in this place called Churn Creek Protected Area, which we'd love to go back to this year. Um, and... Uh, he loved my van and he was just like, I need to do something like that for the future. So he, in a way it kind of inspired him and he's been watching the channel, um, him and his wife have, and they decided to get the Sprinter van and they're building it out. And we talked about doing the electrical stuff. So anyway, that that's, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing here in Victoria. Um, and, uh, as soon as he's done all that, I'm going to be jumping into this job and working on it all day. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, looking forward to moving on too. I want to go up island a little bit and uh, relax. I've been enjoying Victoria, but it's uh, it's the busy season down here. So it's it, there's a lot of people running around, a lot of tourism and stuff like that. And it's just a, the vibration of the whole place is and there's more traffic than I really want to deal with. So kind of want to go back up mid island or something like that too so that that'll come around anyway hope you enjoyed that little <laughs> segment um <clears throat> carol sogman do you take vitamin supplements i do i've got uh, here look here's my little vitamin cabinet i've got uh <laughs> that's some parasite cleansing that i haven't started yet I don't even know if I'll get around to that this year. Uh, vitamin C, and I usually get this brand, Thorn. And then I've got uh, my zinc, and I've got uh, vitamin D and other things. And I've got magnesium, CalMag, this stuff. It's good. Um, and that's it. Then I've got some sardines in there. <laughs> um, I don't take really a multivitamin or anything like that. Maybe, Maybe I could incorporate that but i eat a lot of greens a lot of uh, vegetables and stuff like that a lot of green dark green vegetables cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and that sort of thing and then um, of course wild plants and about wild plants you guys right now um there's a lot of berries as you can see there's um all that's available but the greens it's not so much because everything's really dry so all those plants have just dried right out and there's been very little water going into the soil. So even the rooted vegetables this year are gonna be lacking a lot in their size and in their quality. So it's not a great year for foraging, um, which is kind of humbling because it sort of tells you just how intertwined we are with our environment and um, the climate and all that sort of stuff. So like if, you know, if we were, if we didn't have farms and we weren't helping each other out with agriculture and animal farming and that sort of stuff, like we'd be in trouble. Like it would, it, this would be a very, very, very challenging time to be um, trying to survive off the land and stuff like that. But, um, you know, there'd be a way to go out there. I think, I think being close to the ocean could kind of, you know, make things easier because you potentially catch some fish and stuff like that. Um, clams and shellfish and salmon and whatever else might be out there. So 
Anyway, off on a little rant about survival. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to try and catch up on some of these questions and have some more coffee wherever that went. Where'd that go? There it is. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for the coffee. Uh, Big Polly, 788. Your honesty, humbleness, and openness is refreshing, bro. Your van is one of the best I've seen. Ever thought of building vans for a living? Big Polly. Um, yeah, I thought I thought of I thought of it a little bit. I've done a lot of carpentry stuff in my time, and I'm really, um, I mean, if I if if I had a very clean, clean shop where there was a dust management system that was bar none, like a really good dust management system and some really cool dudes and gals that were wanted to be in on that creative aspect, I might consider it. It's not something I want to spend a lot of my time on, but I could, you know, definitely uh, kind of co-lead something like that or lead something like that. But uh being involved into it full time, I don't know if I want to do that because I'm really enjoying the YouTube thing, but you never know. Like, I mean, there's no guarantees with YouTube either. So, um, I'm liking what where this is going, and uh, for me, there's there's it's worth the investment to put more time into the channel because my daughter lives in Bali, and being able to, to work on the road is just really appealing to me in that sense because I could literally, and I'm right now we we're, we're kind of working out some stuff here for travel and stuff like that but i could very well be taking all of you guys to bali with me on a little trip over there which would be pretty fun and it's it's pretty um special to be able to to kind of go wow you know i can i can do that and i can make a little bit of money while i'm over there now the channel's not really making me much money right now but it's 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 uh I'm making a little bit, which means I can make a little bit more, and, and eventually I can, I can, I can do this. So I'm investing into it quite a bit. But I could do van building as well. But then I'm stuck in one place. That's it. I'm married to that shop. Um. Yeah. Um, Carol Stockholm, how's your weight loss going? Um, Carol, I've lost about 30 pounds since I started my keto. So that was probably three or. four uh, four months ago or something like that. I, no, it wasn't four months ago. I think it was three months ago. Of course, a lot of people lose a lot of weight initially. Um, it's just water retention, so that's where most of that was from. But then it's about 30 pounds have come off. Um, so it's going really good, and I'm feeling a lot better. Um, still, every now and then I've interrupted the keto diet with a beer, so you'll probably see little glimpses of that. <laughs> it's like hard to pass up a really good hazy IPA um, uh, Moonset Valley Farm could you tell us a little bit more about your rear suspension I have the same van and rear sagging is bouncing off the bump stops of road all after the camper build out okay Moonset Valley yeah if you're in that situation yeah I, I totally feel you and so I hope you're listening um, what I did initially is I I went to a place that did suspension work on trucks and vans and all kinds of vehicles and I got a quote from them. We, we worked it out and they did a leaf spring installation in the back. So they added another leaf to the single leaf spring that's only back there. So they put another one underneath it um, and they bent it in such a way that it gave me an actual lift. He said it's actually really easy to do in the, in the back of these vehicles to, to add a leaf spring and give it height. So that part wasn't really the expensive part I also had my front suspension updated and I had a an inch and a quarter lift put into the front with some spacers um, I ended up spending $1,700 Canadian on my entire suspension upgrade at that time and then over time and that's I was going to share that in a video and it's just it's it was maybe going to be part of the build series but it kind of falls in that gap where I skipped over some of my build videos um, but you could do your rear end for probably four to five hundred dollars. That part wasn't the expensive part. The expensive part was messing around with all the front end stuff. So, um, and um, 
is it worth it? Definitely it's worth it. And then the other thing I did is I had the bump stops. I took those bump stops out and I replaced them with new bump stops at the time. And uh, then just recently I took the bump stops out and I put in an airlift kit. And I'm thinking to myself, I should, probably should have just replaced the bump stops with the airlift in the first place. I've only had the airlift for a little while so far, but so far it's pretty nice. I'm, I'm really enjoying having it. I don't know how it's going to perform in the long run, but so far it's, it's pretty impressive. So you could try one of those. The company's called Airlift. It's out of the USA. And they, they'll make one for your van. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. So pretty simple because I'll check in with other questions and stuff here but um you could probably figure that one out and what to do an extra spring and an airlift kit um am i gonna upgrade my van to a bigger one that was gears and beards i'm not there's nothing like that in the plans gears and beards i i got bills to pay like i gotta kind of like slim down my spending right now and uh and really just focus on paying off my debt I need to do that before I can really do anything else. And so uh, I could be in this van for a little while and I'm okay with that. It's a really good van, but uh, I am pushing it with this van by sending it into some back roads that I shouldn't be, but you know, <laughs> it's hard to stay out of there. I love the back country, man. Um, so let's see. Uh, Oh, I'm catching up to all you guys in real time here. Big Polly, thanks for answering my question too. One more, have you ever considered traveling down south to the USA? Absolutely, um, for sure, man. I, I'd love to come down to the USA and, and down to Mexico and stuff. Um, it's just a matter of fitting all that stuff in. It's like, there's this old saying that says like, um, like too many adventures, not enough time. Or like, you know, I used to have a shirt. It was a fishing shirt and it had a whole bunch of little fishing lures on it. My mom gave it to me and it said, too many lures, not enough time. But I, I guess you can play that saying any any old way. Um, but basically it's like there's too, there's so much to do and there's not enough time to do it all in the lifetime that we have. But um, I'm pretty sure I'll be going down to the U.S. at some point here. I want to. There's, uh, there's some fishing down there I want to check out. Um, even down in Mexico, um, maybe if things ease up, maybe even some hunting down there. I don't know. That could get a little expensive, though, because I'm an alien, buying an alien tag. and I don't know if I'd really want to do that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah. Um, Hazel Swords, Irish fan here. Do you think you'll ever go abroad? For sure, I will. Um, well, my daughter lives in Indonesia right now, so I'm kind of planning to head over there at some point and uh, don't have the dates squared away just yet. There's quite a bit of complications involved in travel right now, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware. Uh, so it, talks, it takes a lot of extra planning and thought and foresight. So we're, uh, we're gonna have to work out something here shortly, but it'd be nice to go see my daughter and uh, I, I chat with her on video calls and stuff, but I can tell she's she's there's there's an energetics about the conversations that I can tell that she really misses having me there, and um, I don't think she really realizes that I stayed here and she moved over there, and I think she just misses me as you know misses her dad, and I miss her too, um, big time, big time. Um, Gary Boyd, are you back on the mainland or still on the island? I'm on the island, Gary. I'm in Victoria right now. So I'm in, um, I'm in my friend's backyard right now. He's got a Sprinter 4x4. I'm doing a electrical conversion on it. Um, and I'm, I, there's been a few, um, murmurs from the yoga studios that are trying to sort of coax me to go back there in a way I know they'd like to have me in town so that I could go and do little repairs and stuff like that but right now um, I just don't see there being a lot of work on the table for me over there yet um, to make that worthwhile but uh, at, at some point I'm gonna go back to the mainland and spend some time doing some work in the yoga studios and then doing uh, doing some personal stuff as well but uh, 
I won't, I'll, I'll probably be on the island for a little while longer here. Maybe a, a couple more weeks anyway. Um, yeah. Buy you a beer when I get back. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, beer, beer, beer. Sometimes I'm not making it a priority because I'm a, I'm doing keto. But every now and then I've I've had a beer and so I've kind of gone off under certain circumstances, having a glass of juice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marjorie, thanks, thanks, thanks for sending that out. Every dollar gets you another story, and Joseph tells a good one. She's kind of just sharing my Patreon um, email there. So, guys, the way Patreon works is, uh, I know some of you might not know how it works, but Patreon is the second social media app that uh, you sign on to and you become what's called a patron, but you're just a person on there that gets an account, you set it up, and then you can, um, you can send a pledge to someone that you want to follow, like me, and... Um, you send that along and then you've got access to their full social media account on that page or on that application. So if you join my Patreon, then you'll see my social media platform side of Patreon and there you'll get like more regular updates with what I'm doing in real time. Uh, you can send me a personal message. Um, I get a bunch of those, so I'm, you know, it's, it's a bit difficult to keep up on all of them. And, um, but there's, more of a personal side of everything. And then it's also a way that you can support me and putting gas in my tank and allows me to keep going out and producing the videos and stuff like that. It helps pay for everything because it, it, there's expenses involved in what I'm doing for sure. And having a YouTube channel, as I've learned, is pretty well a full-time job. And um, it's it's fun though. I'm really enjoying it. There's, a, there's definitely a sense of calling to it. And I feel like uh, I've kind of come into uh, a line of a line of work and a line of expression that really feels appropriate and uh, in line with what I want to do and how I want to share with everyone so I'm, I'm liking the platform a lot patreon and YouTube they're both great <clears throat> um, so yeah if you want to come join patreon just go over and take a look at it you'll it'll, uh, it'll it'll give you a rundown and uh, it's a fun little community of people I'm still here Lost or buffer? Yeah, something happened. I don't know if it's the inside of my van, so we're gonna sit outside. Let me get my stool and we'll see how this works. If you guys are wondering why I'm not looking directly at the lens all the time, it's because I got my computer here and all the comments are coming up on, on here. And that's Nick right there. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Again, that's a Sprinter van that we're working on. So my eyes are looking at my screen to read the comments instead of right at you guys sometimes. So that's just, just letting you know. Um... Jenny Robbins, would you come to the lower mainland to do our electrical? Okay. Guys, I've been getting this question a whole lot. Um, and 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 I, if I lined up all these jobs, I'd be booked for years out. It's like no doubt that any van builder out there is fully booked for two years. There is no shortage of people that want to do this stuff. And I, I could take these jobs on and uh, make a little bit of money, have a little hustle going on on the side. And I'm doing a little bit like with this one here and there's another one up island that I'm gonna do, but I'm pretty selective about what I take on. Um, I'm in this crossroads with um, my internal process and my vision and what I wanna do. And I really wanna spend my time creating more content on YouTube and teaching people and sharing information that's gonna help others. Um, learn how to do some of these things by themselves and I know I'm not you know discounting that you might not be able to do this yourself and you're in a position where all you can do is hire somebody 
totally different scenario in which case teaching videos don't help you a whole lot but uh, I suppose some of them would in any case um, it's a bit of construction going on over there so I'm sure you can hear that coming through a little bit if I put my time into working on somebody's van I'm plugged into that project and I don't have time for my YouTube channel. I don't have time to create content to share with others. And uh, for me, investing into the YouTube channel is far more valuable um, for my own vision and for, for uh, what I wanna do, even though it doesn't make me a lot of money right now. It's, it's basically a little extra at the end of the day, but it's, it's helpful for sure. And it's promising, it's gonna go somewhere. Um, if things keep going, keep going the way they're going, it's going to go somewhere, which is great and very encouraging. So I'm, I'm really interested in putting my energy there as opposed to just taking on another van project and working on that because that's just, you know, it's a very um, short moment. I make a little bit of money, I trade some time for money, and then um, the only real people that benefit out of that is the people that are that have the van. And, and me and that arrangement. But outside of that, it doesn't really get shared further than that. Unless I film it too, which is fine, but then I don't want my channel to be about me filming van builds all the time. Um, I wanna share the wild. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys wanna hire me out, I'm thinking my rate's gonna be about a hundred bucks an hour. And uh, that's, for me, I'm kinda like, that's more than what I normally ask for, for sure. But I'm, I'm like to take me away from what I really want to do. Like, I, I, I need enough money there to be able to feel like, okay, I, I'm not upset with myself for taking on this extra job. I'm getting a hundred bucks an hour for it, um, so I'll, I'll do it. Then I was also thinking, well, what happens if a whole bunch of people end up taking me on for a hundred bucks an hour? Then I'm gonna find myself in that position again where I won't want to do it again. It's got to got to keep a certain amount of my time for myself. But anyway, long rant, you guys. Hundred bucks an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna catch up on some other questions here. The stream is back. You bet. We got a little bit of a different background going on. Is that stool for stool? <laughs> <laughs> that's right Frank <laughs> yep <laughs> that's just a little fold up stool chrome style panhandling we see uh, I don't know what you mean but it's, it sounds like you didn't have a very uh, I don't know if that was a sense of humor I'll just leave that alone <laughs> they can't always understand everyone's messages so um, I know some of you guys are at work right now. Maybe some of you are lunchtime if you're in Eastern Seaboard and stuff. Um, and if you're in the Philippines or somewhere else, you're like, I think it's kind of middle of the late in the evening for you or something like that. Uh, Jenny Robbins, we live on the river you, and you can salmon fish and make money and content, but I understand. <laughs> oh. So Jenny, you're on the mainland, you live on a river that's got salmon fishing in it, and I can make money on content, but I understand. I don't know. I, I probably don't have time for it this year, Jenny, but uh, actually I don't, but you can send me an email anyway. My email's on my, my videos. Um, I really want a salmon so bad. I still haven't caught one yet, you guys. I'm, it's all I, it's the only thing on my mind that's been on the island. It's salmon, 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 salmon. I'm calling it the water pig. <laughs> it's my new name for it, the water pig. I want to catch a water pig. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment to the salmon, though. I don't think it is. A pig is a majestic animal, though, so, but so is a salmon. Uh, uh, Rama Nurdin. Hello, how do you know so much about plants? Um, I'll do a video on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a dedicated video on this, uh, Rama. But uh, I've got, um, I probably spent 
uh, for the most part, I, I did a, like so much reading and research into a one whole winter. And then I got into, in the springtime, when the spring came, I started foraging for some of the plants that I was reading and learning about. And um, it was kind of a process uh, to slowly integrate that in and build up confidence and that sort of thing. And I kept reading and I stayed plugged into research and reading plant stuff for probably, like I still do it today, but I don't do it as much as I used to. But for the first two years, like I just digested a lot of that stuff and I read a lot, just educated myself a lot on it. So, um, I mean, you can teach yourself anything you want. It's just, it's helpful to, uh, when you want to learn something, then it's easy to teach yourself something or it's easy to go learn it. It's, it's hard to do math when you're not interested in learning math. And I, I struggled with that when I was in school. I was just like, I don't see the point in this. Now I use math all the time, but it, there's, there's a motivation behind it now. Whereas when I was a kid, I just didn't understand it. Do this because you, we know you need it later. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to me as a kid. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm in even over a phone call for $100 per hour for instructions. Consults are great. That's right, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> I got your text message, Chad. I haven't replied to you, by the way, but um, Chad's got my phone number. <laughs> Don't share it, Chad. Um, uh, yeah. I'll probably do a consult thing or something like consult fee for something like that. Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. Try and catch up on. Joseph, can I interrupt for a second? Oh, Nick's got a question. Yeah. Uh, do you want the batteries in? Do you think? Um. I mean, if they're just sitting on the shelf, is fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can make the little things to hold them in place. Yeah. yeah and okay. then, I, I but just I'll, I'll, just kinda... I'll need to move them around a little bit while I'm. Yeah. Hooking up the main wires to them. Any other questions? Well, I was gonna say part of my payment is delivering that sea pig. So, I don't know. Oh yeah, Nick's gonna help me get that that ocean pig, the salmon. Joseph said he hasn't caught one when he was, until he was 10 years old, or since he was 10 years old, sorry. That's right. I, re I, re pressure. I really wanna catch a salmon, you guys. Catch and cook salmon video. Ah. <laughs> uh, When you're, you're real, your breathing changes and you're so cool. We see. <laughs> Sorry, I just tuned into that question. <laughs> we see, when you are real, your breathing changes. You are so cool. Cool, man. That's, that's cool. My breathing changes when I'm real. But everybody's does. Well, when you're reading? When you're real. When you're oh, real. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> breathing and staying present big pharma doesn't want us to know about healing power plants um kind of true i mean big pharma wants to keep their recipes a secret because that's what they're in business for and a lot of a lot of medicine comes from plants like the plants offer so many complex chemicals and stuff that are um a shortcut for a lot of those chem like companies to like synthesize and incorporate those in different combinations versus synthesizing like synthetic chemicals and stuff which are completely I don't know unusual unnatural maybe or just get into a whole whole question with all that sort of stuff what is natural I mean I mean everything kind of is actually even though even all the stuff we make there's something natural about it in my opinion but there's you know Natural is a subjective word, so it's it's uh, you know it's, it's it's a tricky one to talk about that without further context. So I don't know if I want to get off on that rant, so I'm just going to drop it. Um, if you guys want to hear me talk about my natural rant and the context behind it, you let me know. But I could I could talk about many other things. <clears throat> Margaret Hughes, hi Joseph from <clears throat> uh, I think that's a British flag. 
I don't know my flags really well, Margaret and, and all of you. I don't know my flags really well. <clears throat> it's um, 16.21 p.m. here, so it's 4.21 p.m. <laughs> it's funny, it's the first time I've seen someone use a 24-hour clock abbreviation and put the p.m. beside it. Uh, that was that was cla that was awesome. <laughs> um, so it's 4:21 p.m. or 16:21. Love the island. Go back to Campbell or go to Campbell River. Sam and my brother and family live on the island. I hated math when I was a child. Or was my best. <laughs> okay, you got a bunch of things in there for sure. Uh, Campbell River salmon. I heard the bite is on, and there's a little pier there, or something that a lot of people can get onto and fish. Um, he, that, he wasn't farting, it was just unrolling some foam packing there. <laughs> what was that say? It sounded like you farted over there as oh. you're unrolling that packaging. But... So yeah, there's a place more of a big deal <clears throat> There's a place right now to catch salmon in Campbell River. I'm just not interested in setting up my cameras and doing a film video when there's a whole lot of, a lot of people around competing for a very same spot. But now that I've said that, that would actually make for a pretty fun video because it's sharing the wild literally with a bunch of people trying to catch salmon off the same spot. As long as all those people would be good about it, then, you know, well, I'm in for it. Um, and I'm going to be driving up to Campbell River here soon. I'm going to go to Quadra Island, so it's, uh, it's on the way. So you never know. Yeah. <sighs> okay, Laura. <clears throat> Joseph, how hard would it be to put maybe one to two panels on my cabin? I don't need a lot of power because I'm going to use a wood burning stove. <clears throat> Laura, you're going to really like this video that I'm going to do, which is a cabin off-grid electrical installation. At least that's getting lined up here for the future. Um, the client is basically just wants a very simple setup as well, but they're going to want a certain amount of power as well, but it'll, it'll be pretty much the same setup as what these guys are going to get. It's going to be pretty easy for you because you're just tying into solar as your main power source. So you're getting your solar panels. Um, and then you're getting a charge controller to go with it. I'll kind of talk about, um, I won't do it right now, but to talk about like how to choose a, an appropriate charge controller for your solar panels and then putting that together with your batteries. And then of course, then you just have to wire all your stuff off of DC. I tie in an inverter and it changes things. The whole thing's very simple, but it's, there's a little bit of math involved and in understanding and I'll try to cover some of that stuff more while I'm doing uh, Nick's van and also while I do um, the, the cabin up in Quadra. Um, so I'll come, but it's pretty easy. I, I would recommend if, you know, if you're gonna go with two 100 watt panels, order your panels um, and get MPPT. Don't get the polycrystalline panels, get the MPPT panels. Uh, polycrystalline will work it's just not as efficient and you want to get as much efficiency out of the panels as you can so spend your money on NPPT <clears throat> faith T push your van and yourself to bigger and better things and it's amazing the adventure us guys have trying to get van life started thanks for sharing holy smokes you betcha um, Thank you, Faith T. I'm definitely going to be pushing myself to bigger and better things for sure and bringing you guys along with me. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when trying to get your van life starting, like I relate to that. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of energy at the same time. It was, necess it was a necessity for me and like it made a lot of sense for me to get into it at the time. But it's a lot of work and uh, I should probably do a whole video talking about what it's really like to change to, to make that transition what it felt like for me pretty neat um ivan thank you for the super sticker um and rebecca nostrad thank you for the super sticker i got a banana and a hot dog and i'm not sure those two things would feel great in my gut right now but i like the stickers <laughs> nick just looked over at me like like what? He kind of did the whole dog cocked his head thing. <laughs> I, I love it when you talk to a dog and they're kind of like, huh? What? 
you know, they kind of do this. It's so cute. <clears throat> Thanks for calling me so cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, I was sharing a vision, giving them a visual. The whole. Um, yeah. Anyway, are we still live, you guys? What's, what's going on? Are we still, timer's still counting. Okay. Hazel Swords, did you ever do magic mushrooms? Of course I have. I mean, I haven't done it in a really long time, but I've done, done magic mushrooms before, for sure. <laughs> and Nick showed me a bag of mushrooms. We can't, we can't show that on camera, Nick. No, they're just for sauteing with your eggs. Oh, those are um, regular old cooking mushrooms. They just happen to be like right outside here while we're working on the van. <laughs> Oh, man. Good times. It's the, uh, it's, it's the magic of the island. It's just, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done magic mushrooms in a long time, but I've, I've, I've eaten some magic mushrooms before. Um, do... Faith tea, being a woman in an abusive situation, I can't wait to start. Oh, wow, Faith, um, you're really calling me to do a video on this one sooner than later. Um, yeah, I feel you with that. I definitely feel with you with, with that. Um, hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you make decisions and you're able to put some time into it and, and do something for yourself, it's really gonna, it's, it's really gonna help you out in the long run. It can be difficult to work through stuff like, like that and uh, making the transition into um, that freedom of, of living on your own in a van and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it takes time, but once you're in it, uh, you're gonna really love it. It's gonna be very healing to you. Um, you're gonna wanna surround yourself with a support group too, like friends and stuff like that. And hopefully wherever you are, I mean, I've, I've been really blessed with my van life community over here that there's so many people that live in vans. It's, it's nice to pull up and make friends and chat with people and then get a little posse going like we did with Chrome, Emmy, myself and Jeffy Bear. And then there's Mark and Bobby and the list goes on, right? It just keeps growing and stuff. But uh, yeah, having some friends around in, in, in that transition can really help. So, um, you know, prayers, prayers. My, I've got little prayers going out to you, uh, Faith. Uh, Moonset Valley Farm, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for the answer on the rear suspension. You are welcome. Yeah, you're most welcome. I'll, um, I'll probably talk about that in more detail. So I've got a couple things coming up that I, I still haven't filmed it yet, but I'm going to do a van tour. I'm going to film that video, and it's just going to be your classic van tour video. Um, you know, here's my house, I live in this, I've lived in this for this long, here's my story, this is the features and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna do probably a more technical van tour. So I'll, I'll leave a lot of the technicalities out of my more romantic van tour, which is just like, this is how pretty it is and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and that's what the lifestyle feels like to me. So it's like more of a, I shouldn't, maybe not a romantic, but a, you know, a relatable video van tour so that'll be one and then the other one's going to be like if you want to see a more technical side of all this stuff and understand what I put into this thing you can watch this video and then I'll do one that's all technical and I'll, I'll probably talk about the suspension and that in more detail as well so uh, that's a project that I got to go out and film and do and uh, fit it in here somewhere um, where's Wendy what part of the island has been my favorite so far Actually, when I came here, came here with Chrome and he showed me the little town of Shimanus and Crofton. Energetically, I really liked the energy in those spaces the most. It was just, it was quiet, it was relaxed. Uh, there was, there was just a nice energy. There's so much island though, I still haven't even seen a lot of it. So I, I you know, that, that, that might shift for me. But I imagine like that would be a nice place for me just to kind of like unplug, unwind. Uh, kind of tune into my own brain and spirit and be able to you know plan and do all that sort of stuff from so I'm, I'm gravitating towards that area uh, North Island was amazing too super beautiful just no cell service up there <laughs> I need cell service um, <clears throat> and David S would you ever consider buying a small piece of 
uh, just land where you can stay as long as you want. Yeah, I would. Um, I wouldn't buy it for staying there, David. I would buy a piece of land so that I could have a, um, like a shop on it, a place where I could pull the van into and work on it, um, store it if need be for a short period of time if I had to go for a trip to, let's say, Indonesia or something to go see my daughter. And or um, the other side of that whole thing is food prep. So having a freezer, um, having a smoker, a dehydrator, um, big place to hang up a whole bunch of herbs and wild plants that I pick so I can dry those out and you know bag them all up for later use and stuff and share that whole side of the food processing stuff with the channel because that like I got a vision to do all that but I don't have the space to do that just yet and it, it does take up a fair bit of space um, but I might be able to do a collaboration with someone or some folks on that beforehand. And I imagine, like, I wouldn't want to do that on my own anyway. Like, I'd still want to share that uh, with, a, with a bunch of other people. Um, like, sharing is just, it's, you know, you know, it, it can get complicated, but it, it, it's so much more valuable for everybody when we, when we share stuff and we're, we're able to, uh, to collaborate on stuff like that. Um, you know, you, you have to work out compatibilities and stuff like that too when it comes to that sort of thing. So that's important as well. But anyway, yeah, I would, I would love to do that in a piece of land. I'd still live in a van, um, you know, unless, you know, I, you know, I'm not, of course there's circumstances that would change that and I won't get into those, but I, I like living in a van. Um, Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Karen B, it's so convenient. Mushrooms right there on the table in case you want an omelet. Crack me up. Yep, I know. I'm not going to show you. That's, that's the sound they make. <laughs> uh, keeping those off the camera. I, uh, I haven't had mushrooms in a long, long time. Um, it's funny, I'm, I'm editing my videos from up on North Island and I'm like, man, I look like such a stoner in those videos. I look like I've been smoking weed and doing mushrooms and all that stuff. And I, I wasn't, I was just completely high on the place. It was beautiful. Incredible to be up on North Island. Really amazing. Um, but I've got, I've gotten that feedback from people my whole life. Like people are like, oh yeah, you smoke weed, right? You, <laughs> I'm like, no. Nope. I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have though, but I don't. I don't smoke weed. Um, I gotta catch up on some of this stuff. Get away from that whole topic on that stuff for now. Um, hey, Justin, enjoy your videos. Okay, let's see. I'm looking for some questions, you guys. How you doing over there, Nick? Uh, pretty well. Um, Are we getting close? Yeah, I, I think I'm ready. I just... Uh... Oh, I, I might be switching off here, guys, because I'm going to be jumping on this job here soon. Well, yeah, no, no panic. But what I wanted to ask is, can we put these batteries, do you think, right tight together with just a little bit of foam in between them for vibration? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you can you can put little foam like you're doing with the foam, and that's that's okay, like that. Yeah, you can even put a little piece along the back as well. Yeah, um, I think I will. As yeah. much as you want, it's just road vibrations and stuff. Some of that stuff might squeak, and I don't know even if that'll squeak when mm, you drive, but it seems like it's okay. I don't think it'll. Yeah, I don't think so. It's it's actually a sound meant to be a sound deadening product, so we'll see. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then my other question. This is very trivial, but. I want to put the um, uh, hook for the awning right along here. So, like, if it's tight back here, that's probably fine, right? Yeah, you'll have room for that. There's, yeah. a, there's nothing going in front of the batteries. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's, you know, it's not going to make yeah. them or do any damage to them, and I don't want to take up other space. Nope. The batteries just live like that, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's Nick's Sprinter van. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. It's, uh... A long way to go. Yeah. We'll do a 
I'll probably do a tour with these guys later once it's all done. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that interruption. Hope you guys like that interruption. <laughs> Shouldn't say sorry because that was it. That was kind of entertaining. That yeah, was not very presentable. <clears throat> ah. Ah. Okay, I'm staring at my comments again. So, I kind of mentioned this. That's why I'm looking like this instead of right at you guys like that. So, because um, I got all my comments here on the screen. Uh, yeah, hit the hit the like button for the algorithm. You got that right, Blue Man. People hit the like button for the algorithm. That, that, that definitely helps. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button. I don't think I've ever said that on my videos. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, hey bro, what's up with getting too close to bears? So that was from Soundman626. Hey bro, what's up with getting too close to bears? I don't know, like, I mean, that's, um. That's kind of a relative observation. So um, I'd say, you know, like that was a zoomed in shot of the bear. So you're probably talking about the last video where I got that black bear. He was probably about 30 yards away and um, I could just tell like based on everything that he was fine. And actually what you didn't see in the camera is I had my um, my little, this thing here in my hand. Let me grab it. <clears throat> I had this thing in my hand. So it's a little flare gun, marine flare gun, and it takes this thing, which is a bear banger, and I had this thing in here like that. So I was pretty well ready to go and disrupt whatever that bear was doing. Essentially what this does is, I'll take that out of there so it's safe, is uh, you, you just shoot it like you would shoot a you know, pistol or something like that, and it's gonna be this big blast right here and a big bright flash. Um, I mean, that's my first bear deterrent that I use. Um, and of course, I've seen a lot of bears. You know, I went, you know, I don't know. I've, I've seen a fair bit of bears. It's, it's interesting to say I've seen a lot of bears because it's based on what? It's like, I don't know. Anyway, I've seen a, I've seen a handful of bears every year. And I kind of get a sense of their behavior and stuff like that. So I, I can understand things. Running into that grizzly last year, though, that was uh, that was pretty interesting, and uh, it was kind of cool that I was shooting a video on that. So that's uh, if you want to see that video, that's called uh, I think Encounter with a Grizzly Bear or something like that. That's that's on my channel. You could look that one up. Um, that was a bit nerve wracking because that was a grizzly bear, and I was just kind of like I wasn't really prepared for it. I still had that thing in my hand, but it was I was I wasn't feeling too confident in my situation. <clears throat> anyway. Um, I, that guy wasn't afraid, the big black bear that I saw, but at the same time, I could tell he wasn't at all interested in uh, people and getting close to people. He was just, he was pretty well focused on his own thing. So you can read their body language and that's kind of like reading the body language of a dog. You can kind of do it. Sometimes you're wrong, but you can, you can do it. And then you kind of have to like send the vibe out, be like, you know, kind of like, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to you know mess around with me kind of vibe and uh <clears throat> they'll pick up on your energy whereas if you're like you're shaking and you're like you're really uh nervous and all that stuff they're gonna pick up on that too and uh i don't think that works in your favor um but there's been the odd bear that's kind of made me go Ooh, i don't know you know um yeah anyway bears are uh, they're pretty pretty beautiful animals really fun to watch um big irish you and chrome should go halves on a shop for working on your vans and storing them he's been talking about it in his videos recently it's funny chrome and i've actually been t chatting about it but we we haven't been like the conversation hasn't gotten to a place where it's like let's do this um I think Chrome's in a position financially where he can do that, and I am nowhere near that. So, like, I financially can't contribute to it. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe one day, though. Uh, Chrome keeps, you know, driving around and shooting videos. And, uh, you know, if he waits a few years, 
and things go really well for me, maybe. Um. <clears throat> Um, navigating the unknown, any tips on installing the max air fan? I'm going to be doing that later today. Is 14 uh, gauge wire okay for the wiring up of the fan? I'm just going to set it up directly to the battery for now. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The max air fan is super easy. You're cutting that hole in the roof. Uh, really, the most amount of time is is taken up in the prep. Uh, you got to build a little wood trammel panel or something like a little pitcher frame on the inside so that the screws can bite into it and then the wiring uh you know as long as you're not doing a super long run of wire for i i can't remember what gauge wire they use coming out of the fan i don't want to say yeah i use 14 gauge although you're probably fine using 14 gauge wire it doesn't draw a lot of um wattage that fan but um you know just use the you could go look for a <clears throat> there's an application you can download on your phone from blue c and they've got a wire size calculator on it you can just use that and it'll tell you what wire size you need um and you can get a wire sizing chart and stuff like that there's a million of those on the internet help you out um Hey mom, <laughs> big hug to you too. Good to see you in here. <laughs> uh, that's great. My mom's name is Joanne Foster, Commandant. You guys, if you see her in her comments, that's that's my mom. Um, I hope you don't mind me disclosing that, mom. Now you might, you know, if you wanted to keep that private, now you know the jig's up. Oh. <laughs> uh, Okay. Backup, Tim Coots, backup plans for when my van takes a dump. Okay, Tim, this is a good, good question. I don't really have a, a, a backup plan. Like, I mean, so I've got um, friends and family that were like, that's fine. Well, you know, you, you, you're welcome to stay in our guest room or guest, like, I got I got the support that way and um, I'm sure there's some of you guys out there too that would just be like you can come stay with us for for a little while while you get sorted out so um, ideally I would have like sort of my own fostered independent backup plan and um, it, it would be something where I'd have some money saved aside and stuff like that for like being able to get something and get into something else rent a vehicle sleep in that or you know whatever there's there's various things so I don't really have a backup plan, so I'm right now. I'm, I have to be really careful with everything that I do, um, and uh, you know, I just, I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't have that. Uh, at least I don't have a financial. Um, I'm not in a financial position to have like a financial backup plan where it could be like I could go out and buy a new van or something. Um, I'd love to be in a position where I could do that sort of stuff, but the reality is, is a lot of people aren't in that position too. And so it's, it's kind of interesting because more of you can probably relate to me more being in this position where it's like, uh, that's my life right behind me there. And, uh, you know, if something happened to it, I'd be in a real, um, difficult situation. I don't want to be in that situation. I've been in a lot of difficult situations and I kind of could use a break from that stuff for sure. And, uh. I, I, I don't want to, yeah, I, I just, I'm very careful in taking care of my, my, my van. So, plus it puts a strain, even if you got friends that are helping you out and stuff like that, when you, when you're, when you're kind of like, you know, there's a sense of responsibility and being able to take care of yourself too, and having backup plans. And like, you can only really work within your means and where you're at in your life. You have to take responsibilities for, you know, the shit you got to take care of and the relationships that you're um that you're involved with and, and all that stuff and and the relationship with yourself uh your relationship with money your relationship with work and all that stuff and it doesn't matter where you're at it's just taking responsibility for that stuff and then you know um <clears throat> trying to build from there I, I suppose well for sure build up and um really so that you're not you're not um 
you know, sort of being a burden or, uh, or, or taking up space that other people have to pick up slack for and stuff that, you know, and it's not that you need to be independent or anything. This is just, just, just my take and philosophy on this whole thing is just to like, try to take care of yourself. And if you can do that, you can probably get yourself into a position where you can start to do other things for other people. And, uh, that's where the real beauty is. And, um, you know, sharing and that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm in my position right now and there's a certain amount that I can take care of for myself. And then there's a certain amount of burden that I suppose I put onto, um, the community at large. Like there's probably aspects of my lifestyle that, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the services, like having, um, public garbage containers where I can deposit my garbage in from time to time. Like, you know, aside from paying taxes on my fuel, um, I'm not paying any property tax, but I'm very grateful to be able to put my garbage into a receptacle somewhere that someone's going to clear it out at the end of the day. So, you know, I think about stuff like that and I think about how can I, how can I build my life into something where I can give back and, uh, and do something for other people as well. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, that could be a pretty cool, cool rant to get into. Um, Dana A. Hi, Joseph. New sub here. How do you get over fear of hiking alone as a female in Barracuda country? I don't know. Um, I mean, the fundamental of that question is as a female, and I'm not a female, but I could tell you how I deal with it, and I'm pretty sure that was the answer you're going for, and you're looking for maybe how I could relate that to being a female. Um, what I recommend is carrying um, some like bear spray, um, a, a bear banger. I really like these things here. Um, so Dana, these are, this is just a, a flare pistol gun. You can buy this in, in just about any marine shop in Canada and in the US, I'd imagine. Uh, there's probably places all over the world that sell these kind of things. I think this one's made in, I don't know where it's made, but it's, it looks like it's made in Peru. Um, but it's just a plastic, Thing that you put a flare into if you're out in, at sea and you have to you know notify people or something you just boom shoot it off and it's got a flare the same company makes a um, a bear deterrent round it was actually tricky for me to get these here in Canada but I, I did get them because uh, they don't sell these in a lot of stores I think Bass Pro Shops carry it but they didn't have any in stock um, and you just pop that in there and uh, I'll take that out of there because I don't want it in there. And you just point it um, sort of like up in the air and it'll just go boom right here. Instantaneous flash and instantaneous bang. For me, I feel like having something like that is good because the really loud noise and the really like bright light be enough to at least make that animal rethink the situation. And I would, you know, in my case, I'm like that, that gives me a little bit of time to get organized with the bear spray and figure out a plan for that. But, um, you know, there's only so many measures you can really do before then it's just you and the animal and it's, uh, you know, your, your claws against their claws kind of thing. And at that point I would just, I would just fight. I would just give everything I got to keep myself alive. And, uh, it, depending on what the animal is, if obviously if it's a grizzly bear, I would do the whole, and I would just, you know not do anything there's nothing you can do in a case like that but just pray so um as far as having the confidence to go out there is just carrying yourself around like you know like you can run into that sort of thing but just kind of having that attitude that um you know all those animals are going to be in for a bit of a confrontation with you if they mess with you and stuff like that and i think that puts out a little bit of a vibration when you're out there that's sort of telling those guys to leave you alone Obviously, that can be a not the easiest thing to cultivate, I suppose, depending on your background and uh, how you feel about yourself and your size and stature. Like, you know, if you're a small female, I can understand that maybe you might feel more vulnerable. Um, in which case, uh, my friend Chrome would say, uh, you would, you know, there is, uh, he says this to his, his daughter sometimes. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't mind me sharing this, Chrome. He's like, uh, what would a badass bitch do? And so you could kind of think like, what would a badass bitch do in this situation if you're out in the woods by yourself? <laughs> Maybe that might help you out. <laughs> uh, 
So anyway, that's kind of that. <clears throat> Hopefully that helped answer that question for you. <clears throat> um, uh, River Sinks Outdoors, thanks for the super chat. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. I will. Thank, thanks for that super chat, bro. Um, or, or gal, I'm not sure. Sister, brother. Um, my fellow human, I appreciate that a lot. That's going to help me put gas in the tank and do my next video. So, uh, thanks for River Stinks Outdoors. Sounds like you got a, your own YouTube channel with that name. Um, he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Terry White, thanks for the super sticker. Um, appreciate it, buddy. Um, hello from Pennsylvania. Uh, let, let's find some questions here. Mark D. Custer, thanks for the super, uh, the super chat. Um, good to have you in here, buddy. I appreciate the support there. Uh, Yeah, I'm just looking for some questions. I had to, Mike McKinley, I had to go back and see the video in the grizzly bear. Yeah, it's a good video. It's uh, it was that was a uh, that was quite a day. Um, Daniel on the trail. What do you do to stay healthy? Fitness routine. Okay, Daniel, that's a great question because right now I'm doing jack shit about that. <laughs> I just felt like saying jack shit. Uh, I didn't have to. I could have just said I'm doing nothing about it. But uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm. Um, I, I haven't been doing any sort of exercise routine r right now, and um, I'm really trying to. I don't know. Get get back into it. So I kind of need to. Um, I've got. Uh, I plan to go back to the gym. I'm probably going to work on working out some asymmetry. Um, deficiencies that are have accumulated in my body so um or asymmetrical i should say um so my my hip i gotta straighten out my 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 right hip is a little tighter than my left hip so i gotta straighten out my pelvis um i've got my knees so i got patellofemoral syndrome so i gotta work on work on that so there's a particular exercise that i need to get behind and do that so there's a few like foundational things that i need to work on and then once those things start balancing each other out then i can really dive into more doing weights and everything in a safe way uh, so I have to address all those um, asymmetries and sort of like that other stuff in my body and um, try to rebalance as much as I can. And then um, exercise, I'll be getting out and doing some walking and stuff like that. Um, probably I'll get into some, when I'm in a more balanced place, I'll get into some HIIT exercises. So that's the high intensity um, workouts. Um, so interval training, I guess. I'll probably do that as well as just getting out in nature walking, hiking, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess there was a bit of a chat going on here about Chrome and I, so... <laughs> um, Chrome and I are in a good... Like, we're buddies. Um, we're two different individuals, two different agendas. So when we went up North Island, there was a little bit of a drama that played out on YouTube. And it was kind of like, oh, Chrome's ditching Joseph and all this sort of stuff. In reality, it didn't play out that way. I mean, he kind of made it look like that with some of the shots he was taking. Like, see you later. And he kind of slams the door. <laughs> you know, right after that shot, <laughs> he opens the door. And then we had a bit of a conversation and, you know, everything was like, you know just more relaxed it was it was kind of like I yeah go you know um I I knew he wanted to get on with it and go do his thing and um it was just like yeah go go do it I'll I'll catch up later um he was you know I couldn't deny him that there was part of himself that wanted to go out and feed that part of his own spirit and go out and, and check that st stuff out and um by me being open and and sort of not being one of those friends it's like oh wait for me buddy wait for me like uh, you know, then, you know, I could do that. And then he's, he's waiting around for me, but he was already kind of doing that a little bit already. That, that was enough. So 
Anyway, um, he went and did his thing, he explored the island, and then we caught up again in Winter Harbor, and pretty soon I realized that uh, we have both two different video styles with what we want to do. I would park it in one spot, and I want to go fishing and hiking and explore the area, and um, shoot some nature shots and stuff like that, and just breathe all that space in. And, um, and he's full on about like, going on the adventure to see what's around the next corner and what's there and what's there and um, capturing that and getting that kind of like, oh wow moment and stuff like that. And I knew he needed to run at a quicker pace, so it was fine, just, you know, and I think if we did do some cl like uh, travel and stuff in the future, we'll probably end up like meeting together and then splitting off and then meeting together and then splitting off and, and that kind of thing. We'll probably end up going out and shooting totally different experiences of like, uh, like a travel trip and then we'd get together from time to time have a fire cook some food over it or something like that share stories so anyway chrome is a very good friend of mine and he is way more generous than he comes across on some of his videos like he is a very generous um caring compassionate individual he's, he's just very solid with himself as well so that's you know i appreciate that Anyway, that's that's all I'm gonna say about that. Are you planning, okay, Jenny Robbins, are you planning on doing merchandise and stickers? Yes, I am, I'm just, uh, so I need to find someone to help do some artwork for me. So if you know, you know if any of you guys that uh, do have, um, are able to do that sort of stuff, I think you kind of have to do it on a digital format, like an iPad or something, so it can be scaled out and stuff like that. I haven't had the time to get around to it and I still don't know exactly how I want that to look but um, yeah I don't know I, I, at some point I will I got a few other things that I want to get done first um, uh, let's see when are you going to own a pet uh, yeah I'm, I've got no plans to get a pet let me see. I'm trying to... <clears throat> Ivan, thanks for the super sticker, buddy. Um, wait for it. <laughs> I'll wait for it. <laughs> uh, River Stinks Outdoors. Again, how many amp hours is a 10K battery? Um, uh, I guess you're saying 10 kilowatt battery? Uh, I don't know, man. I'd, I'd Google that one. I'd have to Google it myself. I'm not going to Google it right now, but... Um, 10 kilowatt battery I just google it so it depends on the voltage of the battery as well uh, if you can provide the voltage the amount of watts that are in the battery I could tell you how many amp hours are in the battery um, I guess 10k is kilowatt so you're probably saying it's a 10,000 watt battery but it depends on the voltage um, thanks for the super chat though by the way uh, river sinks appreciate it and I I I'd kind of go and figure that out for you, but I'm going to stick with the comments here and stuff. Um, okay. Uh, Liam Ski 1010 thoughts on a cooler versus a fridge for starting van life September October in Ontario uh, For for that late and you're just starting it just do a cooler um, You'll probably find soon enough. You won't even need a cooler you, you'd be able to store all those um, Food items in a in an open spot and it'll stay just cool just fine unless you're heating your van um, When I get to the winter time myself, there's this little storage area having the floor of my van that actually stays pretty cold I'll uh, probably end up using that more like a fridge and I'll probably run my fridge as a freezer in that case for the winter time so that way I can uh, carry a little bit more food with me but we'll see um, but yeah I would just say like if you're just starting and you're you're kind of getting going I would say just start with cooler for now um, take, you can you know the whole fridge thing is awesome but you can take your time on that you can figure that one out in, you know in the springtime or summertime for yourself <clears throat> Um, and you, you're probably not going to be running around trying to get as much ice as you think because because of the time of year that you're getting into it um, uh, 
Branch Snapper, have you ever experienced anything you can't explain on your travels? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's probably been some stuff where I just kind of written off at some point and I don't really think about it anymore, so it's not, um, it's not that memorable or, you know, my prefrontal cortex has just turned that part off in my brain so I don't think about it anymore, but I'm, I'm like, you know, nothing, no, I never, never had anything that was unusual and stuff. Like, there's situations where it's kind of like, yeah, eh, like, was this a grizzly bear rubbing up against this tree or was this a, a Sasquatch? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, there's, I mean, that kind of goes with anything that you ever experience. It's like, can you explain anything that you experience? It's, um, it's always subjective. Um, <clears throat> are you, okay. Uh, Mr. Bowler, are you still update on the van? or anyone else. Update, I don't know what you mean. Are you still update on the van? My van is done. That's finished back there. Um, there's one little addition I could do, but it's it's finished. And I'm gonna do a van tour soon, so that's, uh, I just gotta get out and film it. And I, I was gonna film it locally here in Victoria, but I'm gonna go up island a little bit and film it up there. Um, I just feel like a different spot. And the different spots for me, not for the van. I just want to be in a different spot when I film it. Um, what you did? Oh, awesome. Hmm. Okay. Paul so, Bridgers, do you have lots of miles on your van? And do you put lots of miles on your van? So I've got, uh, my van when I bought it had, it's in kilometers. Um, I don't know what it's going to be in because all the vehicles up here, everything's in metric. Uh, so I bought it with 225,000 kilometers on it, and I put on, it's about 270, so I put on 50,000 kilometers. It's 275 right now. Um, two years, so that's about 25,000 kilometers in a year. I was doing a fair bit of driving around while I was working for the yoga studios. That's where I put on most of my mileage because I'm doing a whole lot of running around for those guys. Um, going to store shops up and down Vancouver through the whole Fraser Valley, all that stuff. Um, and um, I'm probably not driving around as much now that, uh, you know, uh, since COVID and stuff happened. But uh, still, I was doing a bit of running around while I was building it out. And um, now, of course, exploring the island, doing a bit of running around. But that's where the mileage is at on the vehicle. It's probably worth, like, if the engine were to die, with everything that I put into it, it would, it, I, I'd imagine it'd be um, kind of foolish just to walk away from it. It'd be much better just to put a new engine in it. I've updated all the suspension and all that stuff, so, I'd, you know, that would be what I would do. I'd probably get a new transmission at the same time and just switch it all out. Um, Mike McKinley, um, yeah, good to see you, buddy. Um, take it easy, and... Um, We'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. I know some of you guys are at work, so you know you kind of have to do this, and it's not the best day I suppose to do a, a live stream, but I, I chose to do it, so. Um, Laura, thanks for deleting that individual or taking care of that stuff. I'm just gonna get rid of that person altogether. There we go, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Paul, did I ever encounter safety security concerns when camping out in my van? No, not really. Um, not not yet. I mean, you know, if I'm in a real sketchy neighborhood in a, in a city, then I feel a little bit more, like, um, on edge. But uh, I generally don't spend time in sketchy neighborhoods. Like, if I, if I drive into a place and it just doesn't feel right, I, I just keep driving till I find a spot that I feel good about spending the night at. Um... <clears throat> uh, Franco, do you have to register your van as a camper in Canada or can you keep it as a regular car? Is there a difference as far as insurance and tax in Canada? Um, I can't tell you the exact full answer to that because they've just updated all the insurance here in Canada, but my understanding is like right now you can only re register like the vehicle as a factory van. ICBC is not going to cover anything for the build, so like 
anything happens to it, the rest of it's it's a gamble, really. Um, yeah, it's just the way things are kind of going and that whole thing. Um, it'd be great to insure it for stuff like that, but you know, it just means that I have to insure it like in here and in here a lot more. So yeah. Lisa um, Rich, do you believe uh, Rich or Rich? I'm gonna say Rich. Do you believe your Reach? I think it's Reach. Do you believe your van size is a space to start with, or should someone start with a bigger or smaller? Uh, Lisa, I would say like it, it totally depends on like what your circumstances and what your situation is. I would say like you know spend some time going out and looking at vans and and deciding for yourself which one feels like it this is good or you know i can move into this size and be comfortable or not some people start this off in a small sedan and they go from there um i think cat lady van she started off in a little car and then she saved some money aside and then eventually she bought her van and she converted it out and she's in that one now then uh hi and then aside from that it's just um I don't know, like uh, choosing something that you really want to be in. Uh, for me, the, this was my second choice. My first choice was a, a big, tall sprinter van like Nick's. Um, but I couldn't have, I, you know, I, I didn't find one. I found one that I almost got into, but I didn't get it because it had a major flaw in it. And um, at the time, I was kind of revisiting my whole financial situation, and this, this made a whole lot more sense. Plus, I had that little stow-and-go seat in the back here that I could strap my daughter into. So that was that was a deciding factor for this little van that I got now. Um, and I sort of thought of it as a stopgap towards something, towards what I really want. And that's okay. Um, is Forresty Forest in here? <laughs> He is in here, hey, eh? Hey, buddy. Good to see you, man. <laughs> right on. I watched a couple of your videos lately. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look like you're having a good time, buddy. It'd be fun to meet up with you at some point. And, I don't know, just hang out. You could cook me some of that delicious meat that you make. Um, yeah, I know you're very well. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lang, how are you? Maybe that doesn't sound so right when I say that. <laughs> So, that doesn't that sound good. Doesn't Scratch. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't oh, God. Know... Oh, yeah, we'll just have a exactly beer. I just we We'll just get together and have a beer when the fire season's yeah, over and we can have a fire or something like that. That'd be fun. Well, stick with <laughs> what we, um, what we need. Oh, wow. Technically, you need to replace it. Detecting with, uh, uh, detecting with old man salty. Hey, hi, bud. Watching from Cape Town, South Africa. Enjoying your humble and honest attitude. Oh, thanks, man. That's cool. From all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. I met some really genuine, nice people from there, and uh, I, mean, I met some genuine, beautiful people from all over the world. But um, yeah. Oh, here's another person here. I'm gonna hide this other. I don't know, just keep people spamming my chat feed here. <laughs> and some webcam thing. Um, anyway, I think we got another guest here uh, for the... Uh, Nick, Nick's chatting with somebody. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm at Nick's place and I'm, I'm getting ready to jump onto his van. So let's go take a look at it one more time. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, he's ready for me. So I'm going to be jumping in here and spending the rest of my day uh, getting started on the electrical conversion of his Sprinter van. He's got, he's going to get one more of these batteries. Um, so he's going to have a total of 400 amp hours of AGM, uh, which is only... Actually, those are 125 amp hours, so that's going to be 500 amp hours of AGM. And look, I can stand up in this thing. Isn't this great? This is what I'm talking about. This would be a game changer for me, being a van that I can stand up in. Right? <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing. So anyway, that'll be the thing. And he's building a shower. He's putting a shower right there. 
Um, I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I'm doing the electrical in here. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I think, I think I'm going to say goodbye um, for now. Let hey. me just check the comments. And there's, uh, there's, there's Nick's second half. There's Michaela. <laughs> so it'll be those two. That's her sprinter van. Ugh. Anyway, it's getting a little busy around here, so I should probably say goodbye to you guys. And um, thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for all the love, too. And I really appreciate uh, connecting with all you guys. There's been a lot of comments, too, that I want to want to catch up with and um, stuff like that. And I just, like, it's, it's great to read and connect with you guys. And there's part of me that feels like I want to be able to connect more. So my brain's thinking about how to make this a little bit more interactive and do maybe more live streams or something like that. So we'll see. But, um, you know, if you got to get back to work or wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, um, much love. And, um, yeah, I'm just <clears throat> safe travels to all of you. I'm reading some of your comments here as I'm saying goodbye. And, uh, yeah. This one is going to be switched with a, um, time for me to get back to work i suppose here do this uh do this fan work but um anyway you guys stay tuned the videos that are going to be coming out um so i'm still up island obviously right now i'm in victoria so my videos are a bit behind but um uh you're gonna catch up soon enough actually so anyway uh we'll see you soon and the next videos coming out are pretty special i'm gonna be checking out this sweet sweet beach um which blew my mind it was so great Anyway, guys, <clears throat> lots of love. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. I'll figure out how to stop this thing. Oh, there's that stupid webcam thing again. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Hide, you, hide user. <laughs> See you guys. Take care.